Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Count Chocula, and today we're gonna see if we can beat Starfield only using our fists. And the first thing we have to do is use our cutter on this rock, so the answer is no. Not really, but we do have to make our character, and ha ha ha, funny internet guy makes ugly video game character, and now everyone laugh. But for real, 10 internet points and a firm handshake to anybody who can guess who I made. Now there's no fist weapons or brass knuckles or anything like that, but you can get perks and stuff that increase your fist damage or give you the ability to knock people down or stun them and stuff like that, and you could also get some armor that increase your fist damage as well. My plan for this build, since I'm gonna have to get close and personal with most of the enemies, is to have a lot of survivability, so I'm gonna pick perks that also increase my health or give me damage resistance resistance and I'm gonna do a lot of drugs in the game. And before I get into my first scuffle, I wanted to see what the fist animations look like and I immediately noticed that for some reason when you're in third person the animations will lock you in place so you cannot move around but in first person you can punch and move at the same time so if you do for some reason plan to do this I would definitely do it in first person. I finally made it to my first fist fight with some pirates and immediately rushed them to give them all a taste of my fist. And as you can see they are all thoroughly enjoying it and I figured you could do a power punch the same way you do it in Skyrim by holding holding the attack button down, but it's actually the right stick in this game, and it's less of a power punch and more of an uppercut straight to the jaw. After that, we have to learn to fly, and as much as I would just love to spacewalk right over there and molly -wop their ship to death, that is not possible yet, so I do have to shoot them with some weird bullet-shaped fists. Once we're done with that, I head back to the ground to take out the pirate leader, and the game will not let me dismiss Vosco at this point, but I will whenever I can, but for now, he's along for the ride. I just keep bum-rushing every pirate I see, delivering devastating combos, and for whatever reason, half of them just decide to explode after I beat them up, but that seems like a them problem. Also, I am very low on health packs already, so I do have to use a little bit of strategery and bait them into this room and lock them in with me while I beat the absolute piss out of them. Then I finally make it to the captain, who is not very happy to see me, but I assume he has heard the legendary tales of that time I went through this building right behind me and beat up like five guys, because I tell him that I like to beat up people like him for fun, and he immediately fucks off and I'm free to go. But unfortunately, I never said that he was free to go, so I punch the bear on that to him, kill his crew, and finish him off with a surprise rectal exam and celebrate it with Vosco. Now I can make my way to New Atlantis, and before I continue the main story, I did a quick side quest for some of that non-violent XP because if I run out of health packs, it is all ogre for me. All I gotta do is run around picking up some scientific bulb things, except for the last one that this little rapscallion stole and gets uncomfortably close to me as he's telling me this. So I go ahead, steal it back, and get some credits and XP, and then talk to my fellow Constellation members. I tell them all about the trippy space rock, then they tell me to talk to some people, I get two levels, and since I have to bludgeon at 50 more people to death with my bare fist to level that up, again, I give myself some more health and the ability to boost jump. And once again, I cannot dismiss Sarah for this mission, so she's along for the ride, and then we take a trip to this outpost full of Eclipse soldiers who are much tougher than the level 2 pirates. This was actually very difficult, even to try to run past everyone wasn't very doable, so I had to tough it out and try to take out everybody one at a time, but it is inevitable that you're going to be burning through health packs during this process. It did not take very long at all to run out of health packs, and it's times like this that I wonder if they actually really expected anyone to play this game only using their fist because they are clearly terrible. But also for some reason, they put in perks that are specifically for your fists, and I wonder if anyone who made this game actually tested this out because there is no way any normal person would find any fun out of this other than hacks like me who make challenges out of this stuff. My only method of avoiding damage was to try to spin around all the enemies as I'm punching them in the face so they can't just shoot me directly in the chest. My only other method is running past everyone and closing the door behind me because I can literally only fight one person at a time, and I usually come out of that with a few bullet holes in me. I was able to take out a few people on the way for some of that juicy XP, only to have to board this ship and fight even more guys and run out of health packs in the process. But I somehow make it out, finish the mission, and filled my pockets with as many health packs as I could find. Now we need to go rescue our friend Barrett 50 Cal, and normally you would have to fight a bunch of Crimson Fleet members unless you're already in the group, but I strategically walked right under this giant spotlight to get past everyone. And once I'm inside, I convinced the evil Crimson Fleet man to let my friend go, and I still haven't even put any points into Persuasion, but I have yet to fail a single check so far. I got two more points to level up with after that, and I put one into health and the other into sneak, but you really don't need the sneak since you're going to be walking up on everyone anyway, but I just wanted to get to the martial arts skill as fast as possible. The next mission has us teaming up with Sam to get another artifact, but we get caught up in the middle of a bank heist, and they ask me, a complete stranger, to talk some sense into the burglars. And judging by his kind words and the many persuasion bars I need to fill, I don't think I'm getting past this one, especially since he says I am not going to talk him into anything. 
So I talked him into it, twice, with no persuasion points still. I accept a shady delivery job from this man to deliver some butter knives to England. Sam doesn't want to talk about his daddy issues. Wait, yeah, he does. Sam's dad doesn't want to talk about his son issues. Oh, wait, yeah, he does. And then we head off to go face the Shaw gang. And I'm pretty sure Sam wants us to stealth through this area, but I saw that they're low-level enemies not wearing armor, so I took this as an opportunity to get my body count up so I can upgrade my fist damage some more. And to my surprise, it was actually much easier taking out guys who are not wearing metal armor and shooting me with assault rifles so i really didn't have too much trouble taking them down especially if you take some drugs like heart plus which increases your damage resistance and makes it a lot easier to survive when you're punching all these explosives that everyone's conveniently standing next to i cleared out the cave pretty easily and then i go to mine out the artifact but i'm a dumbass because i left my cutter in the ship because i just left all my weapons in there but i forgot that i would actually need this for something later so i run back to get that come back to the cave get the artifact and leave and then i am faced with the shaw gang leader and of course she wants to kill me for killing her gang oh wait no she does oh yeah oh yeah she does actually I, I was not able to convince her this time and i got into a very big firefight but it doesn't really matter because a few punches here a few uppercuts there and she is down for the count and so is the rest of her crew after that i decided to do a few free star quests so i can get some extra experience and money and i learned a lot of things on this next mission for one i realized i should really start being a drug addict because i got some cqb that boosts your melee damage and while i was taking out the leader i suddenly remember that i had a block button and not only that but if you hold the block button while you're doing a heavy attack, it does it way faster than if you're not holding the block button. And because of that, I was bodying this dude. Rib shot, kidney shot, cock shot. I was much more effective in combat from this point forward. And after I got back from that mission, I get deputized and I immediately get busted with contraband. So that is a good sign for the town's new deputy. Mama, I'm a criminal. Mama, I'm a criminal. And since I got busted with contraband, I am immediately recruited as an undercover agent with the Crimson Fleet because I am a criminal now. First thing I have to do is smuggle some Aurora, which is a coincidence since we're going to be getting addicted to this stuff quite a bit throughout the run. I am then sent to intimidate some man to paying up his debts, but it turns out he does not have the money. Oh wait, yeah he does. And then I had to do this space battle, which was really hard and I kept dying, so I went back to the space cowboys. Apparently some rapscallions tried to steal somebody's farm, and I, the drug addicted deputy of this town, was sent to lay down the law. But first I gotta punch my way through an army of giant alien bugs who actually packed quite a punch and were tougher to take down than I expected and I didn't even bother with the really big dudes. Eventually I make it to the lawbreakers and try to resolve it peacefully but he was not having it. And I am suddenly being shot at by about 7 dudes at once but with the power of drugs and giving myself a bit of CO2 poisoning I gut punch this dude enough to end his life Houdini style and I was on my way. Then I quickly take down the rest of his crew by chasing them down in the middle of the night probably looking like quite the hero I'm sure. You are not fast enough You are not brave enough Before I continued on with the Space Cowboys, I do have a mission called Mantis where there are promises of some good old space treasure, so I head out for that loot real quick. Some random folks made it here before I did and immediately threatened me, and I pretend to run away only to turn around stuffed full of drugs and beat the piss out of every single one of them. I maybe had a little help from explosions, but it's hard to tell if it's because my fists are so powerful that it's causing the explosions or the flammable gas tanks that I'm punching, but we might never know. I was actually beating them so easily, despite them being a much higher level than me, that I had to check to make sure I was still hard, and yep, I am still hard. In the middle of all the chaos, I finally got the martial arts skill that gives me a 15% boost to my critical hits with my fist, so that's gonna be nice. I continued towards the treasure, this guy made me about act up, and I realized that I was getting much too confident and that the only way to survive was eating a million health packs a minute, and I was quickly running out, and there were many, many more enemies ahead. Regardless, I marched forward, fighting many more enemies, including this level 30 guy, but luckily he was the last one alive, so I just bullied him into this corner until he left left this mortal coil, and then I found this emo space pirate, but I think I have to blur this. I did end up finding some more health packs and used them to continue my rampage, taking out the last of the pirates, including yet another level 30 enemy that was somehow no match for my level 9 fists. Then I finally make it to the trap room, and since I don't have any hacking skills and I can't shoot the turrets, I have to run past them. Don't ask me why I thought of using damage resisting drugs, but not the ones that literally make me run faster or the ones that straight up slow time down. I am a simple man, and I have never said otherwise. Anyways, after about a million attempts, I finally zig and zagged my way across, and not five seconds later, this asshole waltzes in with a dumb smile on his face like I didn't just get turned into Swiss cheese for about 20 minutes straight. Sadly, in the next hall, there's another turret, and I tried to use his body as a human shield, and it worked until about halfway down, but since I'm literally one hit away from death and I have no healing items, I died pretty quick. So I swallowed my pride, headed to Neon real quick so I can buy some Aurora, and that's a butt. And after stocking up on some healing items, I head back and easily make it 
past the turrets now, but then I am faced with a new problem, robots that are all in the level 20s and are much harder to take down than those fleshy humans. Like, I'm not even kidding, the robots are way more annoying to fight because it takes about three or four times as long to take down one robot than it does a human, and I am not a fan. So after I took out a few robots, I just ran past the rest to get my reward, which was a nice set of armor, which was much better than what I was wearing just based off defense alone, but also comes with some nice perks, like being able to randomly catch enemies on fire or disarming them, and not to mention a brand spanking new ship called Razor Leaf, which is also a great Pokemon move. Now I can use my shiny new ship to go back to that Crimson Fleet quest and actually beat them this time. After that, I get access to the key, and as soon as I get there, there's people arguing about the resolution of this game, and I immediately buy some shielded cargo to carry that sweet, sweet Aurora I've been injecting in my veins. Next, we're tasked by the Crimson Fleet leader to go find clues about Willy's treasure, so me and the boys head out to prison to scope it out for clues. And we are immediately surrounded by a million enemies, but luckily they're all like level 5, which is a great opportunity for me to get progress in the next boxing skill, because now I need a hundred kills with my fist. I also got the second level in the martial arts skill, which gives me a 15% chance to knock enemies down with my fist, so uh, wow wow wow, that's pretty cool. We continue through the prison and get attacked by a second swarm of aliens, and it was just as exhilarating as the first time, and then my partner asked me to betray our leader, I tell him to screw off, but I'm not gonna tell on him because I ain't no snitch. Then I have to kill even more aliens, sometimes even in slow motion, and it was another close one because I once again ran out of med packs and CQB, but I haven't run out of Aurora, which did save me in the end. So the lesson for the kids here is do school and stay in drugs. And now we're finally at the end of the mission, we just have to kill a few more aliens and holy shit. Yeah, so this part was really hard. Like I said, I had no med packs left and I can't even leave this location to go get more, so I tried hiding and letting my partner do all the work and I immediately get smashed out of my hidey hole, reminiscent of the giants from Skyrim. That's when I realized I had a little bit of Aurora left and I used the rest of what I had to fight this beast in glorious slow motion and had just enough to make it to the end of the fight, bobbing and weaving like some sort of fat green flash and defeated him. After that, I limped back to Neon at 1% health to restock on Aurora and med packs, which I didn't even need for this next quest because this one is all about persuasion. And my optional task in this mission is to get the Earth Society award and of course, just walking up to this lady and telling her to give me the key to the room is not gonna work. Oh wait, yeah it did. After that, I do a little threatening here, do a little threatening there, have to pay off a few people like a chump, get the credentials I'm here for from this balding man and then I am on my way to the bank to make a deposit. Unfortunately, I made a mistake in letting that bald man live because he sends his goons after me and this was the first time that I fought people with guns since I got my new armor and not only does it set people on fire but it also gives me a chance to disarm an enemy which eventually happens to almost everybody since I have to hit them so many times to kill them and I imagine this will be very useful going forward. And speaking of armor bonuses, after I turned in the quest I'm tasked with getting a doohickey for my ship so I can do some more pirating but first I go to my ship's armory to track all the ingredients that I'm gonna need for future upgrades to my armor that I'm gonna want, especially the ones that increase my melee damage. And I finally maxed out my boxing skill for a 100% melee damage increase. Now I could head off to this very secure military ship to get this super secret advanced prototype technology that would be very bad in the wrong hands. So of course this guy lets me try my code about 6 times and doesn't get the least bit suspicious about it. But obviously the guy protecting it wouldn't let any stranger get near it. Oh wait, yeah he would. So I steal the ship with the thing on it and teleport away with about 20 ships closing in on me, deliver the thing and put the thing on my thing and complete the quest. So now I head to Neon to get another thing to go along with that other thing and of course this lady does not want to tell me where her friend is because she thinks I'm a debt collector but oh wait yeah she does. Then I get told to go steal some data from this electric plant and I gracefully sneak my way through the first half and then even more gracefully sneak my way through the second half, grab the data, talk to this dude's brother who's pretty mad at him for some reason and make my escape after I beat up one guard because I was really bored. I turn the quest in and shit was going down. It's finally time to go get the loot, the big loot, the big lost Willy's loot. But first I had to fight my way through a lot of robots and a lot of them either don't have guns or they're attached to their bodies so I can't even knock their guns out of their hands. But I can knock them down, hilariously, and just start beating the absolute piss out of them while people on the side spontaneously combust. And since it's been so long without any real combat, I had over 30 healing packs at this point and about 8 or 9 melee boosting items to help me get through this section. The most annoying part of this section are the turrets because I have to awkwardly jump in the air and punch them one hit at a time, so that makes it take a while. But I did end up switching my punching strategy from constant uppercuts to a punch, uppercut, punch, uppercut kind of rhythm to save myself stamina since uppercuts lower your stamina but regular punches do not. I was able to handle the rest of the robots pretty easy, somewhat, kind of, sort of, until I ran into a level 21 enemy and a robot dog and absolutely booked it and finally downloaded Willy's Lost Treasure. And the ship decided to explode as soon as I get my money for some reason, so I make my great escape and have to make my final choice whether to side with Sis 
Fist F or the Crimson Fleet, and of course, you already know what good guy Shrek would do. Oh, ho, yo, ho, a pirate's life for me. We pillage, we plunder, we rifle and loot, drink up, be hearty, show ho. Also, random tip for this final ship battle, it's really, really difficult, but if you hide under the key ship near these ring things and just shoot from under here, it makes it a lot easier. And now we have to assault the ship in person, or the people on the ship, I mean. And fighting the regular people is not that bad, especially once I get the perk that gives me a chance to stun people, which just kind of makes them ragdoll, I think, which is just fantastic. Too bad I have to fight a room full of robots that are all level 20 at least, and usually like three at a time, and probably over 10 of them total. And of course, it took a lot of drugs as usual, and what really sucks is like I said before you can't disarm them because their weapons are attached to them and it just takes a lot of hits to kill these guys it was not very fun at all but what you can do if you have the stun ability is to stun all the robots that you're not fighting currently so you can fight them one at a time because they will stay stunned for quite a while this was also the first time that I used the red trench drug which actually gives me a 40% boost to melee damage which if my math is correct is higher than 30% and it gives me 300% damage resistance but this was the only one that I found in the entire game so far so I've been saving it for a moment like this and I'm glad I did. Then we just continue through the ship for a while, beating up a bunch of regular dudes with guns, making them flop all over the place while I get my first sneak attack with my fist and it was a great time. Laughs were had all around. And I finally make it back to the Sysdef leader and of course he's not just gonna let me go after all the damage I caused. Oh wait, yeah he is. And with that, I finally finished the Flimps and Crete storyline and get my 250,000 credits and that is gonna be a lot of drugs my friends. And health packs. After all that excitement, I figured I might as well start the Ryujin Industries quest line, and the first mission is quite the exciting one because I am tasked with getting the boss some coffee, so it should be pretty darn easy. Oh, how hard you were working for that promotion. Four years behind a desk, getting coffee, kissing up to that high and mighty Ularu Chen just to get replaced by this nobody? I'll make this quick. Anywhere in the galaxy. Terabrew, enjoy a cup right now. Well, that was unexpected, but I head back with the coffee and immediately get promoted. Wait, what? Four years behind a desk. Shit, I'd be pretty mad too. My next mission is to steal some data from a competitor to our company, and I do just that. I walk right past the guards, use the computer, get the data, and turn in the mission. And I really wish I could have punched the computer to get the information, but technology just isn't there yet. And then in my next mission, instead of stealing data, I'm implanting data into this chest, and that's exactly what I do. A few lockpicks here, a few lockpicks there, and wham bam, thank you ma'am. In the next mission, all I have to do is steal a keycard after running two miles across this open field, and considering I'm doing a faction that's all about SP espionage and stealth, I should probably have the ability to pickpocket people, but I don't, so I just butt punch him to death and take it that way. And somehow, even though I struck this man in the butt two miles away from civilization in the pitch black darkness with nobody else around, she still knew that I killed him and docked my pay. What a see you next Tuesday. And then I am supposed to convince not one, but two people to join our company instead of our competitors, and of course, they don't want to. Oh, oh wait, yeah, yeah she, she does. does. And now we just have to plant some devious evidence on the competition, and the one guard conveniently walks out of the room as soon as I get here to allow me to do it without being detected, so thanks game. Then I have to go steal some more stuff, but first, remember that punk ass bitch Matthias from the Crimson Fleet that I didn't snitch on? Yeah, well he came back for some vengeance for getting him kicked out of the group chat I guess, so I just annihilate him real quick. Then I board the ship that I came for, wait until this lady stops breaking her neck to look at me, steal the thing, and get back to my mission. And then I'm tasked to infiltrate my own place of business in this extremely long sneaking section and I spend a lot of time in vents. And sadly I don't get to do a lot of fighting. Well, actually, I don't get to do any fighting because that's just how good I am at sneaking. I mean, look at me sneak past these guards at full sprint using my jetpack. I did turn the lights off, so that probably explains why they couldn't hear my jetpack. Regardless, I make it the rest of the way, and it turns out there is a traitor among us, and I need to track her down, and it turns out it is the very one that's been giving me missions this whole time, but first, I have to talk to Benjamin Bayou, and he gives me permission to head into the Syndicate territory, but I have to do a favor for him first. Wait, no, I don't. And despite Bayou giving me permission, the lady at the entrance still decides to disrespect me. I make my way through the building uncontested thanks to Bayou and find Imogene where she informs me that she's not the traitor, it's actually that other lady, maybe. I, I don't know, I can't actually read. And then I impress her with my spectacular ability to bleed on command and I am sure she is disturbed but intrigued. Unfortunately, I have to fight my way out, but fortunately, it's a bunch of low-level, non-armored, non-robotic thugs, which is my favorite kind of thug to fight. I was able to knock most of them down or just disarm them relatively easily, sometimes without even touching 
touching them, all while half the people in the room are spontaneously combusting, and that, mixed with the ability to bleed on command, should put the fear of God in these people, but yeah, they persist. Truly admirable. I make it back to Ultron, confront her about being the snitch, and of course, she's not just going to admit to it with no real evidence. Oh wait, yeah she is. I still have zero points in persuasion, by the way. I am then sent off to a mining area to get some info, and it is swarming with ecliptic members, and let me just show you how far I've come in my punching journey by punching the chap off their lips with little to no effort. <laughs> And after that, it's time to undergo some surgery to double the length of my wiener to a whopping four inches and get the ability to just straight up mind control people from a distance, which I will not be using because that is not my fist. And then we set off for the last mission where I sneak through some vents on the roof and I'm obviously supposed to use my new mind control power to make this guy stop the fan blades, but I can't mind control him by punching him in the face, so I just dropped down and got the top of my head cut off instead. And let's just say that these fists were not meant for sneaking because I get caught pretty quick and start dropping fools left and right. And while I was admiring the views, I accidentally went into third person and had to fight a handful of dudes like this, so in case you were wondering what that looks like, here it is. I tried to continue to sneak after that, but it was just not in the cards. The gods demanded blood that only my fists could quench, and I delivered. Also, don't forget that you can stun people and make them take a quick nap and forget about them, because I totally forgot about this dude and just found him chilling here after a while, and then punched him awake until I punched him into a forever nap. And now, all that's left to do is to convince everybody to see things my way. And, and, of, and of course, course she wants to use, to use the Neuralink. Neuralink. Wait, 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 no, no, she doesn't. doesn't. And now that we're done with that, it's time to head back to the Space Cowboys, where the first thing I need to do is get some information on this stolen spaceship. And before I can get that info, this guy wants to help us get a loan shark off of his back before he'll give us the information I need. Oh wait, no he doesn't. So then we head off to our next clue and find our way to this girl, and of course, she also doesn't want to give up the information so easy, and she still doesn't. But then I said please, and she told me anyway. My next task is to head over to the Red Mile, but before I move on with that mission, I spot a pile of loot, and since they finally fixed the thing that you used to be able to do in Bethesda games by just picking up an object, taking it to the corner of the room and stealing it, people will actually react to you picking something up. But not if you drag it into a bucket and then pick that bucket up. And I foolishly tried for a good while with this trash can until I ran around and found this giant bucket that was perfect. And I dragged all my loot in there for a very long time, probably making less money than if I just did the mission, but I was too invested at this point. I took my treasure back to the bathroom and got this much, although I did drop a few and oh, it looks like somebody was eating spaghetti in here. That's weird. And now it's time to do the dreaded mile, which is actually like a quarter mile, but it is full of enemies. And I just did the thing where I put everybody to sleep around me so I can just focus on one enemy at a time, and that makes it a lot easier. And still, this whole process takes an annoyingly long time because of how much little damage I do, and this is probably going to be one of the few times that I show sped up footage because I am really about this life. I am really fighting all of these enemies with my bare fist, even though I could probably just run past everybody. After fighting enemies for a very long time, I finally ring the ding and then completely contradict that last sentence by sprinting all the way past everybody back to the building without fighting a single enemy. Then we have to go back to this dude's ship and he tries to convince me to break the law and I would never do that so I take enough drugs to kill a horse and start beating him senseless. And the hardest part of this whole section is those gosh darn turrets for obvious reasons because I can't reach them very well and they do a lot of damage especially when there's like four of them all shooting you at once. So I have to superman leap off of these balconies just to try to get a single hit before I fall to the ground and take a hundred shots to the head just so I can kill all of these many 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 soldiers running around but never wanted to run out of sight of the turrets for some reason and i really did it i didn't have to i could have just grabbed my loot and skedaddled but i took down every single turret and every single soldier on that ship and it was glorious Aha! i am the brax ghost you cannot hold me now i have to head back to the clinic where this guy doesn't want to give me the vip pass oh wait yeah he does because i know a little bit about medicine i guess and now we have to charge our way through this cave fighting these little alien bugs that do a surprising amount of damage, although I think I might have forgot to put some damage resisting drugs on, but for real, they were like one or two shotting me most of the time. Eventually I make it to the bottom that is not full of giant alien bugs, but is full of robots and giant turrets. 
Yay. And yeah, this was about as difficult as it sounds, and I need to fly up to all the turrets and hide behind them while I beat them up. I ended up forgetting about the three robots chasing me up the stairs and kind of just jumped around the entire place destroying all the turrets, and I was quite startled when I ran into a person, even though that's the whole reason I was here and just kind of forgot about it, to be honest. I beat her up a little bit, and she said, I'm not leaving this place until I'm dead, so I granted her wish because that's what heroes do. After having to fight a handful of ships, I make it to the surface where I am ambushed or I am a bush, I don't know. I I have to take out some goons and I have to say these low level soldier guys are pretty much no issue now. I knock them all down with a couple punches and my martial arts perk being maxed out means that if I knock one person down the people around me get knocked down as well which is very helpful and then I uppercut this guy through the fucking roof. I end up fighting probably another 30 dudes and women and I still haven't gotten the 30 disarms that I need to upgrade my martial arts skill again and I feel like it might be because I knock everybody down so easily most of the time and I don't think I can disarm them while they're on the ground. But anyway I killed the man I came here for make my way back to Hope Town and confront Rob Hope, who was secretly behind the farm attacks all along. Dun dun dun. And he tries to bribe me, but I beat him up and his security pretty effortlessly and the day was saved. And I got a shiny new ship, thus ending the Free Star Ranger questline. Now let's start the United Colonies questline and kill some Deathclaws. I mean Terramorphs. First we gotta go sign up for the UC, do a little flight training test, which is a great way to level up your ship skill without actually having to fight real enemy ships by the way. And then I'm told to go to this planet to repair some comms satellites or something, and when I arrive, I am informed that there is a Terramorph on the loose. I can take them. You may think that this would be kind of tough, but any 1v1 battles at this point are kind of a joke because they spend more time asleep than they do awake. And yes, it does take a very, very, very long time to kill this single level 19 Terramorph. And I barely even took a single hit during this fight. And the only time I did was because I was trying to take a selfie with it. Now a Terramorph should not be on this planet. So we got a mystery on our hands, boys. And we're going to be the hard boys. I mean, hardy boys. And also my voice notes keep changing the word Terramorph to Paramore. So now it seems like I have some skin schizophrenic writings about really wanting to take out the members of Paramore. So that's my headcanon now. My next job is to become a debt collector, and since I can't pickpocket the key out of this dude's pocket and lockpicking lawyer's blood does not flow through my veins, I have to go clear out this mine full of spacers to clear this dude's debt. So I make my way over to the mines, and man, it is just not fair for these guys anymore because they literally don't stand a chance. It's crazy how much better this build is now from being literally the worst thing you can do in the game at the beginning to like the second worst thing you can do in this game by the end. And because the message of this video is that drugs are good and children should do them. I think it's kind of beautiful that we make our own drug by the end of this mission called Pick Me Up. Wow, they uh, they really racked their brains thinking of that one, didn't they? Regardless, as I'm telling the council about the Paramore attack, we get attacked by Paramore again, and I make my way out there and it somehow takes just as long to kill this one, despite the fact that I have an army of dudes shooting at him behind me. I also tried to punch Haley into this fire, but it really didn't seem to do anything. And as if that didn't take long enough, I get to kill two more of them, and it takes about five minutes apiece. Moving on. And after that, we had to do a lot of talking and convincing to get access to the Paramore data, but you already know how that goes. Eventually, I find myself in an abandoned lab full of overgrowth and robots, and they're actually surprisingly pretty easy to take care of, probably because they're all pretty low level. And thanks to my perk that knocks people down if they're close enough to me when I knock someone else down, it's pretty funny just watching all these robots crumble all over each other, all uncoordinated and stuff. And after a lot more talking and maybe some persuasion here and there, I end up needing the assistance of a robot friend, and after beating up some sirens and getting getting his battery, we go on a trip to take out the big daddy siren. He is surrounded by a few normal enemies, but they stand no chance against me at this point in the game, and after we take them out, I spend a solid five minutes in this one spot, punching him over, and over, and over, and over while he is in a permanent state of paralysis. And I got absolutely no assistance from my robot friend, by the way, despite the fact that he's standing five feet away and this was his mission in the first place. And after that's finished, we move on to our final mission where I finally get some gear since the Mantis mission that might be worth using since it has higher defense and a few perks that might be useful, but it's up to you. I didn't use them. The first handful of aliens were nothing to worry about. We took care of them pretty easy, but then we had to face a Terramorph. Two of them, actually, and one of them is invisible, along with some regular aliens running around. It was not a fun time. It was a nightmare, honestly. Not that I ever felt like I was going to die, although I was taking more damage than I have been taking in the last half of the game, but even though I found some red trench earlier, which gives me a 40% increase in melee damage, along with the CBX, I was still doing a jack diddly squat for damage. And it just took absolutely forever. There are no perks that make your 
fists do more damage to aliens, which I feel like there should be, but I did beat them eventually. And once we defeat them, we find the answer to the big mystery. The heat leeches this whole time are turning into Paramore after they sniff plant gas. Dun dun dun. And after that, we finally move on to the final battle of the final mission, and to everybody's surprise, it was a giant Paramore. And even with the help of like 10 other aliens, a few humans, a useless robot, it still takes absolutely forever. And I'm getting even too powerful for myself because I cannot stop uppercutting this man into the moon. Like this happened constantly. Like I even got a couple pictures, see? But still, he falls victim to the same issue that everybody who wants to 1v1 me does, and he falls asleep about 90% of the fight. And with that, we finish the United Colonies and we can jump back over to the main quest line, powered up and ready to go. First thing I have to do is make my way over to Neon to set up a little bit of an interrogation, and I need some information from this guy, but of course, he does not want to give it to me. Oh wait, yeah he does. Sadly, I couldn't convince this guy to give me a discount on some security, and despite me having almost half a million credits, I did not want to spend the 4,000 for some security, because that's how the rich stay rich, and I am my own security at this point. And then we can start strong arming this man to sell us the artifact, but he doesn't want to do it until I show him a cool magic trick and shut the door without even touching it. After that, he gives us the thing, and now the original owner of the thing wants to kill me. Oh wait, no he doesn't. Then me and the old man need to sneak through this facility full of armed guards because the receptionist was being a big old meanie McStinky head, and I'm choosing violence for now on because I still need a handful of disarms to max out my martial arts skill, and I have to beat this poor man unconscious about 15 times before I finally get it. And with that, I can finally get the last rank of the martial arts skill, which lets me reflect 50% of melee damage back to your attacker, which probably would have been very helpful with the terror morphs, but not so much for guys shooting at me. And after that, I finally put some extra points towards the armor crafting skills so I can add a few damage resisting upgrades and ones that increase my melee damage. And that gets me a few points closer in the skill tree so I can start upgrading my chemical skills so I can start making my own red trench. And now it's time to go hunting for some more things and I make my way over to this cave full of space troopers and you already know the deal. I walk in, I give them the one two and they go to sleep except for this level 30 dude who actually did manage to kill me which is probably like the fifth time I died in this run so it still hurts pretty bad. I return the thing and then get instructed to go get another Another thing from this ship whose pilot was instructed to not let anyone on board except oh wait no he wasn't they should really fire that guy. Unfortunately, the main man was a little harder to convince to show me his collection, and this mission breaks my heart because I really like this guy. I like him a lot, actually. He has such a better personality than like 90% of the people in this game, and I'm very salty to learn that you basically have to fight him. And even if you don't fight him and still manage to get the thing, there are no other quests for him, and it just seems like a waste. But I don't like being told no, so I murdered his entire crew, and they were fairly typical enemies that I could kill pretty quickly, but he did have two special operatives, apparently, because Bull and Razor take a good while to take out and for the first time i saw somebody heal themselves in the middle of combat and it really pissed me off because it took a long time to get him that far down in the first place after i cleaned up his crew i faced the man himself and i did have the option to just let him go and take the artifact but he demonstrated his ability to teleport away and i knew that no man should have that power so I killed him, and it had absolutely nothing to do with the fact that I really wanted his super sick pimp jacket that I wore for the rest of the game. I took a quick selfie with the crew, and once I made it back with the thing, we immediately get attacked by a couple of hunters, and the rest of my crew flee, but mama ain't raised no bitch, so I stood my ground, and me and Walter just beat the absolute piss out of this man together. Only one of them could be put to sleep, so I would just knock him out and then continue beating the other one to death. Unfortunately, he always disappears before I get the chance to finish him off, but that doesn't mean that me and Walter didn't give this man the beating of a lifetime. Regardless, he escapes, we make it back to the eye, and Sam is dead, so I put on his cowboy hat to honor his memory, and not just because I think it looks cool. And then I do some more busy work until I can finally have a conversation with the people that attacked me, and they tell me that Bethesda has actually been working on the story for so long that the multiverse thing was very cool and fresh when they started it, but now now it's been done a million times so it doesn't hit the same when it's the big reveal of the game. And I tell him to lick my nuts and head to Earth. Oh hey, that's where I live. Nothing too interesting happens here. We fight a few robots, fight a few hunters, and if you're wondering, when the hunters duplicate you, he does not use his fist to fight, he actually just uses the cutter since that is technically the only weapon I have in my inventory. After whipping on a few more Starborn, I meet up with these two buffoons again, and they argue about who I should side with, and one of them wants to watch over the artifacts to make sure they don't get into the wrong hands, and the other one wants to take them all for himself because free will and whatnot, and I once again told them both to lick my nuts and did my own thing. While I'm getting the next artifact, I start 
start teleporting back and forth between different dimensions, and the only enemies here are some weak bugs, but I did teleport back and accidentally punch this guy right in the face, and I felt kind of bad about it, but not really. And I'm not gonna lie, man, it was like 3 in the morning when I was doing this part, and I was not paying too much attention, and it took way longer than it should have to figure out what I was supposed to do. Not that that's important to the run or anything, but I just wanted to let everybody know what a dumbass I am. And once I get to the last section, I need to shut down the universe or rayinator or whatever, and there are a ton of robots in this room, and I could kill them all, but it's like, I'm tired, you're tired, this video is probably over half an hour long already, so let's just stop pretending I can't just run past 95% of the enemies in this game. Alright, cool. And by the way, I had some spare skill points, so I decided to get the combat slide, and this shit is weak, man. I was expecting something like from Borderlands for some reason, but you slide like two feet, and it's even worse in first person, and it makes it feel like it's not even working. Anyway, we make it to the next battle where I have to fight a ton of Starborn, and they all love to disappear like every five seconds, so I get to chase them down, and that was fun. And also, remember when I got that skill that lets me reflect melee damage back? Yeah, it works, and I let this guy kill himself by hitting me, which did tickle my fancy quite a bit. Too bad I stood in the ice water for too long and lost like 90% of my health, and I can't get it back until I get somewhere warm. Maybe. I don't know. This game doesn't explain stuff like that very well. Even with that, I marched forward, uppercutting dudes left and right, straight to the moon. Like, seriously, look how far that dude went. And that dude. And, and that dude. Yeah, I don't know why, but this was happening a lot in this last section. Like, every other time I hit somebody, they would just glitch out and disappear. This was happening to the point that I couldn't even find the Starborn I was hunting anymore, and ended up having to load it back to before I lost my health and try to fix it. That did nothing, and I'm not even kidding you guys. My fists have broken this game. I loaded it back multiple times, tried and tried again, and I just uppercut people to fucking infinity and beyond. And eventually people would just stop spawning, and I can't find anybody else to kill in the quest won't update, so I don't know how to move on from here. It says there's enemies, but there's not. My fist literally broke Starfield. They were just that powerful. So no, I guess you cannot beat Starfield only using your fist because they just become too powerful for the game to handle. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far. I truly appreciate it. Subscribe if you want to see more and you think I deserve it. Comment any challenge ideas that you want to see for Starfield or any other game, and have a great rest of your day. Peace.